this video is to discuss stoichiometry. In order to do uh, solve a question that is related to stoichiometry, it always revolves around changing everything to number of moles. So if the question gives you the mass of a certain reactant, you will need to convert it to the number of moles to find out the mass of the product or maybe the yield of product. So we always revolve around number of moles. So if we're given mass, divide the AR or MR, which is the molar mass, this would be in gram per mole. Um, if we want the number of particles, like atoms or molecules or even ions, then we'll multiply the Avogadro constant. Uh, similarly, if we're going the other way around, so divide and multiply. Let's look at this reaction. Uh, we have 0 0.050 moles of hydrochloric acid. How much of the zinc would react? So if we put a lot of zinc or zinc in excess, then how much of that zinc would react? We look at the number of moles. So here clearly we can see that the zinc to the HCl mole ratio is one is to two. So 0 0.050 is to 0 0.025. Let's look at another question. 31 grams of copper carbonate is mixed with hydrochloric acid in excess. So the acid is now in excess. Uh, we only have 31 grams of copper carbonate. Calculate the mass of carbon dioxide formed. We need to write the equation first. That's our first step. Copper, carbonate, so it's Cu2, so it's Cu2 plus. Carbonate is two minus. Mixed with hydrochloric acid. We know that if we mix acid with the carbonate, we're gonna get carbon dioxide for sure. We'll get copper, Chloride, since it's a Cu2 plus, you're gonna put uh, you're gonna get CuCl2. And what's left? Um, the H. There's probably water in this. It's not balanced yet. Let's balance it. There you go. It's already balanced like this. Okay, now we've got the mole ratio here. One is to two is to one is to one is to one. So when you look at an equation that is balance, that is the mole ratio. Okay, first step, change this to mole first. Look at the ratio. This mole is equi equivalent to this mole from mole, convert it back to mass. Let's do that. So I got the AR from the periodic table, and this is my MR. I put that here. My answer would be 0 0.25. I'm going to leave it like that at 2SF. And this mole will be equal to this mole because it's 1 is to 1. We see it up here, 0 0.25 as well. And multiply the MR of carbon dioxide. Let's calculate that. So I got 44.01, uh, multiply 0 0.25. So my answer is 11 grams. So I will get 11 grams of carbon dioxide. What if volumes of gas was given? In this case, mass was given in the question. So if you're given the volume, same case, you can convert everything to moles. So number of moles when you convert it to volume, one mole of any gas will be 22.7 uh, dm cube. And if you want to change that back to moles, divide 22.7. Okay, what's involved in this question? There is the number of molecules, the number of particles, and they're asking the volume this time. So it'll involve the particles up here. So from particles, you need to change it to moles. And from moles, 
you can get the volume. So first step, 8.4 10 power 22, divide the Avogadro constant. This would be the number of moles. Let's calculate that. So I got 0 0.139534 something something. So I'm just going to round it off like that and uh, change this mole to volume. So one mole is 22.7 dm cube. If I have 0 0.140 moles, how many dm cube is that? That gives me 3.17 dm cube. Let's see what all these terms mean. Excess reagent, a reagent that is not completely consumed. So if I have A plus B, I get C and D. Uh, I'm giving a very simple example here where it's one is to one is to one is to one. So I have more of B. So then B is in excess. By the end of the reaction, um, there's extra B and all of A will be used up because I put a lot of B in. Okay, that would make A the limiting reagent, which is completely consumed. And A is going to determine the yield, as in how much C and D will be produced will be with respect to A, because A is the limiting reagent. Okay, theoretical yield, that is the maximum amount of products that we can get uh, with respect to the A that we put in. It was limiting, right? So theoretically, how much of C or D can we get? That will depend on A. Um, actual yield, actual yield, you can't get it in paper, on paper like this. It will be done in an experiment. And usually in your exams, they'll give you like the result of an experiment from another student. So if that person got uh, something less, maybe some of the products will pour away or spill or splash somewhere. So you get slightly less than your theoretical yield. So actual yield will be uh, slightly less usually. Okay, what's percentage of yield then? You take the actual yield that you get from uh, the experiment in the lab over the theoretical yield, which you calculate from A just now, to get uh, the moles or the grams or volume of C, uh, put that as the theoretical yield and then multiply 100. Let's try to utilize those terms. Determine the mass of zinc obtained, this, so they're looking for this, uh, from the reduction of 50 grams of zinc oxide here by 50 grams of charcoal. Okay, we need to find out who's in excess. Uh, to know that which is in excess, we don't look at the mass. Again, everything revolves around moles. We need to change all this to moles first. After converting the moles, we can see that um, this charcoal is so much in excess. It's 4.2 grams here, uh, 4.2 moles here, sorry. And it's 0 0.61 moles of zinc oxide. So their moles are supposed to be one is to one, but now their moles is 0 0.61 to 4.2. This is very much in excess. So we're going to do a calculation with respect to zinc oxide here. Okay, so if I have 0 0.61 moles of zinc oxide, I'm going to get 0 0.61 mole of zinc. So just change that back to mass. How do you do that? Multiply the AR. So my answer is 40 grams of zinc. An example about percentage of yield. Let's get the information from this and I'll pick up what I need here. Uh, we've got 31 gram of methyl salicylate, which are obtained. Obtained means it's the product. So 31 grams is the actual. 
Um, it's obtained from 50 grams of salicylic acid. So I put that here. I need to convert that to mole later. Uh, equimolar amount of methanol, meaning I have the same amount of that, which is just nice because the ratio, as we can see in this equation here, it is one to one. So when they put it in equimolar, just nice. Let's go to the working here. Uh, same story as just now. So you get the mole here. This mole will be equal to this mole. And for mole, I'm going to convert it back to mass. Then I'll use that formula to calculate what is the percentage of yield. Let's do that. Okay, I got 0 0.3619 here. I'm, I'm going to leave it at this many uh, significant figures. I don't want to round off so soon. So that's going to be the same number of moles for this because it's one is to one. So 0 0.3619 again, moles. Now I need to change, convert that to mass. Let's calculate the MR for this. My MR is 152.16. I'm going to multiply that 0 0.3619. And I got one five two. No, that's not it. I got fifty five point zero two grams. This is what I should get if I have all my products. None of it is lost. Okay, but actually, I only get thirty one. So that's not all of it, of course. 31 is my actual. Theoretically, I should have gotten 55. So my percentage would be 56%. The rest of it is lost. Next example. Um, I've got tomatoes here. Let me draw them. Two tomatoes. There's 20 gram. Oh, 20 gram is not that many. Of tomatoes were digested in concentrated nitric acid. So press this in acid. And the sulfate ions produced were precipitated as barium sulfate. So in some ways we precipitate it. Uh, you get like a PPT, and that weighs 0 0.156 grams of barium sulfate. What is the percentage by mass of this tomato? Let's ignore these. We'll use ours from the data booklet. What's the percentage by mass of the sulfur in these tomatoes? 0 0.156 of barium sulfate. Zero point one five six grams of barium sulfate. How much sulfur is there in this? So let's calculate the number of moles of barium sulfate first. Then we know. Then we will know uh, the number of moles of sulfur that is contained in the tomatoes. So let's convert this to mole. This mole is equal to the moles of sulfur. So divide the MR, got the MR here, and I get the moles here. So this is my number of moles of barium sulfate. This is also my mole of um, sulfur. Now I need to convert that back to mass. So multiply its AR. The AR is this. Therefore, this is my mass of sulfur. And where did this sulfur come from? It came from 20 grams of tomato. So what's my percentage by mass of sulfur in 20 grams of tomato? 0 0.0214 grams is in 20 grams of tomatoes. Uh, I'm gonna multiply by 100. 
to get the percentage. Therefore, my answer is 0 0.11. Let's try two more questions here. Sorbitol, uh, they give you the formula here. C6H8OH6 is a key component of Fisherman's Friend. Extra strong lozenges. If each lozenge contain 91% by mass of sorbitol, this thing here, what chemical amount in moles of sorbitol is present in a 25 gram packet? of these lozenges. So out of 25 grams, 91% by mass is sorbitol. So let's just convert that first, um, 25 grams times that 91%. I found that only 22.75 gram out of that 25 gram packet is actually sorbitol. The rest of it is probably like sugar or something else, some flavoring. Okay, now I just need to convert this to moles and then I get the answer already. So 22.75 divide uh, the MR here. So after calculating these, uh, this is my MR. So I got uh, 0 0.124 moles um, around it up to five. In fact, this is two significant figures, so I can round this up to uh, 0 0.13 moles. Last one here. One brand of anthracite chewing gum, uh, anthracite chewing gum, contains 2.5% by mass of urea. This is urea. Given that urea reacts with ethanoic acid, as in like vinegar, in one is to two, well, we don't really need the rest. What's the mass of chewing gum that is required to neutralize one gram of ethanoic acid? Okay, so I wrote what I need here. <clears throat> and I have one gram of ethanoic acid. So the number of moles here is one is to two, that's the ratio. And we have one gram of this. We're gonna do the same thing as we always did, change that to mole. Mole divide two would be this mole. And this mole change it back to mass. So I got 0 0.01665 moles. And if I divide two, I'm gonna get 0 0.008325 moles. That is my uh, number of moles of urea. Now I'm gonna convert it back to mass. Let's calculate that. So all this, I total them up and I got 60.07, that's the MR of urea. And so I got uh, 0 0.500875 grams. That is my uh, mass for urea. But what was the question? They asked, what is the mass of chewing gum that is needed? Okay, but I only have the mass of urea here. I need the mass of chewing gum. Okay, but it did tell me that 2.5% by mass um, is urea in that chewing gum. So I can simplify it this way, 0 0.5 grams of urea um, over mass of chewing gum times 100 equals to 2.5 5%. Now I need the mass of chewing gum. Let's solve that. So 0 0.5 grams times 100 divide 2.5. That would be my answer. You'll we'll get 20 grams of chewing gum. 
So 20 grams of chewing gum will contain enough urea to neutralize one gram of ethanoic acid. 